Alright, what's going on everyone, and welcome to the series in which I introduce you to all of the most powerful competitive decks in the modern format. The goal here isn't to give you an exact deck list as those change constantly, but rather just to give you a brief overview of how the decks work so you can be prepared if you're new to the format. So today, we're looking at Char Belcher. The deck starts with Goblin Char Belcher. It's an artifact that you can tap and then reveal cards off the top of your library until you reveal a land, and then it deals damage equal to the amount of cards revealed. So if you reveal five cards and hit a land, it deals five damage. Also deals double damage if you reveal a mountain, but that's not relevant here. But basically, reveal cards until you hit a land, deal damage based on how many cards you reveal. Now, the trick is this deck does play any lands a surprise no lands i'm not joking that's not a not an exaggeration play zero lands kind of you see the deck uses the double faced lands from zendikar rising these are all lands right they look like lands you play them like lands these are perfectly normal lands except that they're not lands because these are the backsides of you know random spells so when you activate goblin char belcher technically it is the front side that the char belcher sees so the Belcher just sees instant sorceries and creatures, right? So you churn through your entire deck, there's not a single land there, and it deals 50 damage, you know? It does a lot of damage because there is a special rule. If you flip over your entire library and you don't see a single land, then it just deals damage based on, well, your library count basically. You don't see a land and it just deals damage based on the number of revealed cards, which is your entire library so that's fun and you know what else is fun iron crag feet so this is a four mana spell that adds seven mana to your mana pool but the drawback is you can only cast one more spell this turn. Ironically, Goblin Char Belcher costs four to cast and three to activate, which is seven mana. So if you can cast an Iron Crag Feet, you can use the seven mana to cast the Belcher and activate it that turn, meaning you can get this activation off as early as turn four, except you can get it earlier than turn four because the deck also plays things like Strike It Rich, Desperate Ritual, and pyretic ritual to ramp itself into the stuff even faster. Basically, you're just trying to chain ritual spells to get to that goblin char belcher as quickly as possible and dome your opponent for like 40 or 50 damage. And one of the craziest cards in this deck is recross the paths. You reveal cards off the top of your library until you reveal a land which you put into play, then you put all the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in any order, and you clash with the opponent, which means you both reveal the top card of your library, and if you have the highest mana value, you win the clash, and you return recross the path to your hand. Now this might seem like a weird card, right? After all, we have no lands, so what's the point? We just, we cast it, we have no lands, and then we try to win the clash, like what's the point? and it's it's easy to miss so the catch is you put the revealed cards on the bottom of your library in any order now remember you have no land so when you cast it you're going to reveal your entire library you basically you pick up your deck you say look i have no lands you reveal your entire library then you put them back in any order so recross the path is literally three mana to stack your deck three mana rearrange your deck in any order it's practically cheating except it isn't because that's just what the card does so so three mana reveal your deck put them back on the bottom on the bottom which there is no bottom because your entire deck is revealed in any order so stack your deck three mana stack your deck so recross the path has a couple of uses the most obvious is you just use it to get combo pieces grab a belcher grab an iron crag feet whatever but it also gets crazier than that because this deck plays reforge the soul so it costs five mana but it has miracle of two so when you draw it you can reveal it and cast it on the spot for two and it makes both players discard their hands and draw seven so by itself, combo aside, by itself, this is just a good combo finding card, right? Just draw another seven, looking for that char belcher, whatever. So perfectly reasonable by itself, but it gets more powerful with crossing the paths because you can basically build your own hand. When you stack your deck, 
with the green spell, you literally find seven cards that you want to be in your hand. You put them on top and then you put Reforge the Soul on top. Then the next turn, you draw Reforge the Soul, you reveal it, pay two, and then you put the other six cards in your hand. So recross the path basically becomes not only stack your entire deck, but stack your hand as well. It becomes you recross the path, you reforge the soul, and then you build your own hand. And this, by the way, is why there are lots of singleton cards like Pact of the Titan, Infernal Plunge, Pyromancer Ascension. These are all mostly used for these reforge the soul plays because there are actually like preset, pre-built hands that Belcher players like to draw. Like there's a list. Uh, you know, here, here's here's an example. Belcher players have specific hands that they like to build so they can combo off. So you get things like Pact of the Titan, which gives you a creature that can be sacrificed to Infernal Plunge. Pyromancer allows you to combo off by copying spells. So with Recross the Path, you can basically set yourself up for a win using these combo pieces. Um, also, a, a final note, just in case something goes wrong with your combo, the deck plays Pact of Negation. It's a zero mana counter spell. This deck wins instantly if it can activate its artifact, if it can activate Belcher, but if the opponent has a way to prevent the damage, redirect the damage, whatever, Pact of Negation, zero mana counter spell. You have to pay mana for it the following turn, but ideally, if you're using it, there is a following turn because you're using it to counter something that's preventing you from winning with Belcher. So there you go. So basically, the deck doesn't play lands. It plays double-faced cards with lands on the backside. It can insta-win with Goblin Char Belcher, which it can cast and activate super early thanks to Ritual Spells and Iron Crack Feet. And then it has some crazy nonsense deck manipulation, which allows it to literally stack its deck however it wants. That's Goblin Char Belcher. The deck can shoot you in the face for 50 damage in just a couple turns. So that's something to be aware of. If, if you see your opponent exclusively playing double-faced cards, just be aware you can get shot in the face for 50 damage at any moment. Just, uh, you know, some, something to be aware of when you see those types of lands. So anyway, guys, that's Goblin Char Belcher. If you like this video, I have an entire playlist dedicated to these modern deck guides, and I will leave a link to that in the description below. I'll also leave some links to some metagame tracking websites so you can look at other Goblin Char Belcher decks because decks do change and progress and there are different builds of course. Different players have different preferences so you can always look over those lists yourself. But in the meantime guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful and I will see you in the next one.